and hi mitch hi helen how are you i am great so um i want to start just by introducing myself my name is uh Ellen sanusi i am a life coach and consultant here in new york city where i've lived for the last 23 years where um tell me about yourself and okay. uh where, where do you live so my name is mitch weisberg and I live in Mamaroneck, New York, which is just outside of New York. And I work mostly in education technology. I advise education technology companies and I work with schools to integrate technology and hopefully reach more kids and help more kids fulfill, fulfill their potential. Got it, got it. So first of all, thank you for this opportunity to have this conversation. We are living in very interesting times. Yeah, I, I agree. We have, yeah, we've, we've got a, a pandemic that we are dealing with. We also are here in New York where there are, you know, some confusion with the whole social distancing rules that uh, have been placed upon us. And um, there are some disparities or gaps that I see in that that I, that I don't understand as a black woman living in, in New York in 2020. And um, most importantly, I think what's on the top of what's on my heart actually and what's on the minds and in conversations with people in my community and you and I know each other um, from Facebook, I really want to hear from you. Obviously we do have uh, a generation gap here, but I really wanna hear from you, your thoughts on the whole Ahmad Arbery murder. So at the very beginning, what happened to Ahmad is absolutely tragic. Here's a young man who was out jogging and murdered. That's number one. Number two, the people who did it need to be brought accountable for what they did. But Number three is that this whole investigation was whitewashed or swept under the rug by the authorities. And I don't think that we should be stopping at the people who murdered Ahmad. I think that we need to go further and find out how these people were able to sweep this under the rug and stop that from happening again. That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. So, um, you know, for, for, for my community, um, you know, you've seen many different protests here in New York, around the country. We've seen crimes like this happen. There, um, you know, there was the Amadou Jello case here in New York. Yep. Right, and he's from my native Guinea. Um, and, and now, I mean, there is just even before getting on, onto this call, I got on my social media and there's another black woman that was murdered in her apartment, shot eight times. And, uh, the police were looking for a suspect who they already had in custody and thought the suspect was in her home and she's now gone. I, I'll try to remember, uh, I'll try to find her name um, if you, in case you haven't heard about that. No, um, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So as I have been really rocked and shaken by the Arbery case, um, to be honest with you, I have not been able to sleep in three days. And 
I have watched the video and some of the comments that I'm getting from non-black people were, I don't know what to do. I know words aren't enough. And I'm very, you know, I'm interested, I'm furious to even have to ask this question, but what are you and your counterparts seeing to do about this? Because we have marched, we have marched, and we have marched. And there is a consensus for the black community where we are resigned and we are tired. And our brothers, our sons, our husbands are being killed. Women are being killed, children are being killed. So I'm very um, interested in, in, in hearing from you, like what are you gonna do about this problem? And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk is that I'm confused. I, um, I'm disgusted. I'm angry. Um, I, I don't know what to do. I, I mean, do I, uh, do I contribute to, is it, is there a charity that I should be contributing it to? Um, are there more things that I should be facing on posting on social media, which I just think social media is an echo chamber. So I think that the people that I post to are, would tend to agree with the things that I would say. So it's not like I'm going to change them. Um, I, uh, I, I want to see change where boys and girls, young women, young men are basically able to grow up and live enriching lives, period. And I don't know what to do about it. Yeah. And well, then, is, oh, so, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, and, um, and I, uh, I, I guess, and part of it is, as a white person looking at it, what do I have a right to say? Because, um, you know, it's, it's uh, whites, I don't feel like it's me, but I probably, I'm, I'm sure that I have my own biases, but it's whites who are putting kids and young adults into this position. So it's part of what could be considered my group who's doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that um, I can say um, that I was sad to notice yesterday was, you know, as I'm going through social media is the outrage from white people is, is it's just non-existent. What I see happening is, let's say my social media friends will like or will share what I posted. That's my out outrage, my pain. But I really am curious to see it from your perspective because you know these are white men, some police officers in fact, that are killing black lives. Right. You know, and to to your point, I would certainly like to live in a world where I can see black kids grow up and fulfill their dreams. You know, when I'm in my apartment, I really want to feel safe in here. And I have to say that over the last two days, I do not feel safe. Right. And, um, and as a white person who has virtually never felt that, 
I've, I've never felt that. I've been yeah. in, I've been in um, actually Niger, where I was in the circles that I was traveling, the only white person. That was only for a week. Yeah. And I, and, and to a large extent, I knew I was safe because I was with people who were, who were making sure that I was safe. But I can't imagine what that's like day in and day out living in an environment where you, you don't feel safe. Yeah. And so that's, that is part of the problem. I wonder, um, I mean, are, are white people having this conversation around their dinner table? Well, we did. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, my wife, myself, and our son has been with us for about a month, although he just left today. Um, and he's an adult. Um, we had a conversation about, uh, Ahmed's murder and mm -hmm. how horrible it was, but we ended up with, well, we don't know what to do about it. It's still this, the same, uh, but I'm, I am coming to, one of the things that's popping in my mind listening to you is that I should, in addition to posting this, but I should put into my own words, my outrage and, and uh, need that, we live in a society where this doesn't happen. Yeah. And there's something, um, you know, the, really the reality from me um, two days ago was really seeing that, you know, I have, when I look on social media, my friends, um, I'm 39 years old. So my friends um, have young families. They're giving birth. They're giving birth to their second child. And when I saw the tape, it, you know, it sent chills up my spine to think that I would be that black mom that when I send my son or, you know, out the door or he goes out the door that I would have to stay up at night. Terrified right. for his safety. You know, I, I can assure you that let's say if, you had young kids and they came to my house for a sleepover, they'll be safe. But I don't trust that my kids are going to be safe. If they go to your neighborhood. Right. You know, and, and, um, and that is, that is the issue. That is the problem. And from my viewpoint, there's been enough of these murders that have happened where it's unacceptable for me to hear that you don't know what to do. And yet I don't. I will say that um, whereas I knew this, mm -hmm. but when you posted uh, that let's let we should all be cognizant of the fact that it wasn't um the fact that the video surfaced it's the fact that we all saw the video surfaced and that we all or or you all uh put pressure on the authorities that the arrest happened it wasn't the video itself it wasn't the act itself it was the pressure and it was that that kind of which i knew but Yes. Um, it would kind of crystallize it for me that yes, you know something. It really is that is what why this is why the actions were taken, and that's like the the second or third crime that was committed here is that it sh the action should have been taken to arrest these people immediately. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'm not sure that we're going to resolve this, but um, but I will do more forceful posting. I still don't know that that has the end result that I want, you know, yeah, which is to change society. Well, I think if your desire is to change society, um, 
in your voice, it would be, you know, speaking to your counterparts. And maybe, you know, the laws are, are somewhat different um, in New York and in and, and the South, but black men are still being killed, you know? Black men are still being arrested. Even when you think about the social distancing rule, um, I think last week I saw a post that said, out of 40 social distancing arrests, 35 of them were black. And there were yeah. videos yeah. of cops who have sworn an oath to protect us, literally being the aggressor. You know? Um, Again, I'm, you know, I know this is an uncomfortable conversation and I realize that the discomfort is needed. Right. So do I. Yeah. The discomfort is needed. And um, you asked how you can support. So there is uh, a website um, for Ahmad's case that, uh, you know, they have written some support um, that you can offer for their case. Um, the address is irunwithma.com. Um, but I think for me, most importantly, I need to know that white people are outraged by this and, and you know, that they're going to do something about it. That goes beyond posting on social media. Right. And, and and I, change yeah. the laws. Right. Well, I can't, I'm one person, I can't speak for all white people. I do know yeah. other white people who are just as outraged as I am. Yeah. Um, and if it's comforting at all to know, um, I am definitely outraged and my family is outraged. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. So, I'm going to rely on you to, um, when you see me on Facebook or other social media, uh, and you feel that I am off, to um, to call me to task. And I'd love, well, I wouldn't love because it's very uncomfortable, but I think yeah. it's, it's helpful for both of us if um, we reach out and continue to have ongoing conversations. Yeah, I thank you. Um, I think I think that's important. Um, I think it's important to have a wider conversation, you know, amongst um, other other white people. Um, and I promise you, you know, I have a lot of white friends, and my concern right now is for my black community. You know. I think at this point, I probably take for granted that I get to live in New York, go out the door and come back home. But maybe, you know, that won't, that won't always be the case. And I, and, and I hope not, but it is, it is a scary thought. It is a scary thought, you know? And, um, and I think there is, you know, you will never understand what it is to be black in America. No. I won't understand what it's like to be female in America either. Exactly. And where the difference can possibly be made is by having those uncomfortable conversations. Um, and you're in education, so educating, educating black pe white people on their privilege you know, I should not have to type that black lives matter. I'm a human being. Well, and I'll say what, what shouldn't happen is when you do type black lives matter, you shouldn't be getting responses, all lives matter, because it isn't yeah. a matter of black lives matter, not saying all lives matter. Of course, all lives matter. But the fact of the matter is in society, we haven't, uh, we haven't, paved the way 
for black lives mattering the way we've paved the way for white lives mattering. And so it has to be brought to attention. And the fact that people rally against black lives matter is another area that just infuriates me. Exactly. It's like saying why, you know, when people rail again, you know, say, well, we're going to, we should help breast cancer. It's like, we don't say, no, you shouldn't stop breast cancer. You should stop all cancers. No, you should stop breast cancers. Well, we, we should, um, we need to compensate for the fact that black lives haven't mattered to society and they should matter. Yeah. Yeah. They matter. <laughs> yes. They matter. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you Thank for you. the opportunity to have uh, this conversation. Again, I know it wasn't um, a comfortable one, um, you know, but I think it's one that's definitely needed and hopefully it can be the start to, to many, many conversations. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome.